You are not going to believe what I'm about to say to you right now. In the last video, I gave you a roadmap on how to become a Shopify developer in 2025. But maybe you don't need it anymore. Let me explain. A couple weeks ago, something happened in the world of software engineering, and they call it vibe coding. So what is this vibe coding you say? Vibe coding is a new type of coding where you do nothing but prompt. And I guess vibe? What? Jokes aside, it's another AI hype where programmers would ask AI to do the programming part, but better. Because remember, back in the day, you will ask ChatGPT for guides. It'll give you a list of steps that you need to do. But this time, the AI will literally build the app for you. But most importantly, this is what impressed me the most. It's going to fix issues within your web applications or program. So say for example, it encounters a problem and can't solve it. It's just gonna keep solving it again and again and again until it gets fixed, which is basically what we do anyway. So with all that being said, in today's video, I'm going to go through this vibe coding as a Shopify developer. And we're going to use Cursor AI to build a very simple Shopify app. And in the next video, I'm going to try Cursor AI to build a Shopify theme. So without further ado, let's go back to our computer and start building. So here we are. The first thing that we're going to do is to install Cursor Code Editor. So we'll go straight to our browser and search for Cursor AI. And then here, we'll just click Cursor.ai. And here we're going to download the code editor for Mac OS. If you're using Windows, of course, it's going to tell you that it's for Windows. So we'll just click this button, download for Mac OS. And while that's downloading, I believe we have to create an account. So we'll just go to the sign in button here, and then we'll just create an account, I believe. So let's just sign up. And I'll call myself Bernard, of course. Click continue. I know I can just sign in with my Google account, but Awesome, so now we have an account. The next thing we're going to do is to install the installer. So we'll just open this and then drag this to the applications folder. That should be good. There you go. What I want to do is to create a very simple Shopify app just to test the waters. So what I want it to do is to create a Shopify app where of course it's going to display the list of products from my online store or my development store. It's a very simple Shopify app, but it's difficult enough. Is he though? And there you go. Now we have our cursor app open. The next thing we're going to do is to try it to make a Shopify app, I guess. So how do we do this? Honestly, I have no idea. I have no clue how this works. So I believe we have to prompt here, okay? And that's what we're going to do. So let's just start the chat with, hello, Cursor. I would like to create a Shopify app using Remix. We have to specify that it's going to use the Remix, okay? And it should also be created using the latest version of Shopify CLI to avoid any issues later on. This Shopify app should allow merchant to see, or you know what, let's start first with this app should be an embed, embedded app. Okay, this Shopify app should be an embedded app in the admin because I don't want it to be an external app. And finally, the Shopify app should list the products from the online store and should be using the Polaris library to make the UI similar to the UI of Shopify admin. I think that is pretty specific. Let's just pause for a moment. There are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when building with AI. You have to specify which technologies and which version it should use. Now, if you notice here, I am specifically saying, please use Remix and the latest version of Shopify CLI. If you don't do this, it's going to pick random languages like PHP or Ruby. Okay, so we have options here to use agent, to ask or to edit. We'll just use agent, leave it as is, and we can select different kinds of models from Claude 3.7. I believe the best one is the 3.7 Sonnet, these two. GPT-40, I am not sure, but we'll try it for now and use default, okay? So we can just click send. Okay, there you go. So it's installing the Shopify CLI. Great. Do I have to click run command? I believe so. 
I like the fact that it's asking us to confirm first the following commands before it continues. I think it's very important. You need to um, we need to press Y to proceed. Okay. Okay, we get our first warning. Okay, you see this is one of the things that I'm super worried about, and that is the authentications between Shopify CLI and online stores. I was expecting it to fail because I was like thinking maybe it can't open a browser or something like that. I don't know. So let's just try, press any key to continue. Okay, it opened a browser. Now we can start logging in. Continue, that's fine. There we go. Now we can go back in here. Nice, this is promising, I like it. Okay, so now it's asking us to select whether we use JavaScript or TypeScript. We'll select TypeScript. Next, we have to select the organization. So we have my weekly how, I'll select the development as always. Now create this project as a new Shopify app. Yes, I'd like it to be a new Shopify app. And the name of the app is going to be App Made with Cursor. We're just testing it, so don't matter. Okay, so now it's installing. One thing I'm curious now is how much token did we use just for this? If we can just refresh this and we used one request out of your 150 fast request quota. So far we're good. We're good? I think we're good. Oh, we got our first error. There we go. I see we encountered an error due to Node.js version compatibility. The Shopify CLI requires Node version 18.2, but we have 8. Okay, okay, let's do that. Let's install the version 20. Okay, there seems to be a problem with our with our terminal. We can't use the NVM command, so the next thing it's going to do is to install that. So we'll just try and install that command. Okay, so while this is working, I would say that one of the biggest issue with this is that if you don't know what you're doing and you just click run, run, run again and again, letting it do its own thing, I think it can be pretty dangerous because what if you don't know what you're doing and then it just installed like a very problematic command. Okay, so now we have the correct version. It's going to try again to create a Shopify app. So let's run this command. There you go. I wish I can see what it's doing. Is there a way I can see what it's doing? Ah, pff, it was asking me to select a language. <laughs> so we'll just select TypeScript. There you go. And I'm going to select the development organization. And it's going to be a new Shopify app. And we'll just call this app with Cursor AI. Oops, I forgot the R. Okay, so now it's installing the dependencies. Okay, so now it's done. There were no issues at all. That was really good. The next thing we're going to do is to change to our current directory. And I would say instead of using the code dot, we're going to use the cursor dot, okay? So we'll just try to change our current directory to app with cursor AI. And then we're going to type cursor dot to open this project. So let me just zoom in because it's very, very small. There you go. So since we opened this project to a new window, I believe the query that we wrote earlier is gone. So we're just going to type it again here. For this project, I would like a few inches. Okay, I think that's straightforward. So I would like the Shopify app to create a new page and this page should be visible in the sidebar of the Shopify admin. And let me just rewrite that. This page should be visible as a menu in the sidebar of Shopify admin. In this page, I want the Shopify app to display the list of products of my online store, and it should be displayed in a table using Shopify Polaris. Shopify Polaris. I think that's pretty simple. And maybe I can add another one. Below this table, there should be a text that says Bernard is the most handsome. Okay, so I'll help you create a new page that displays the products as a table. Okay, so it's doing all the explanations that it wants to do, and I believe it's already doing the work, and I can't see what's going on. Is there the tab? Where are the tabs? Let me just go through it one by one. Okay, so it created a new, a new route. I'll help you create a new page that displays the products in the table. Oh. We got a problem right over there. Oh, so we have an issue. Connection failed if the problem persists. Okay, so let's just click this button. Okay. Oh, okay. 
So let's try and install this. Now let's try and install the Shopify app to a development store. Okay, so it appears that the npn run dev is not working. So let's take a look at the package.json. So we have the npm run dev and it's using the Shopify app dev. So it don't work. Let me try and pop this out. Did you mean auth log out? No. So I believe we just have to type Shopify run dev or app dev. Okay, so now we can log into our online store. Okay, so now we have our URLs. We can just press P to open this. Nope, not there. P. Okay, now we can install the Shopify app. Install. Now I would like to see if it's using the scope for products. Okay, it's actually using the access scopes. So now let's install that. We have our first issue. Unexpected token with. So what we're going to do is to make a screenshot of this. There seems to be a problem. I think that's it. We'll just send this. And while we're waiting for that, I would like to try npm v-v 10.5 node version 18.20. It's already 18.20. Perhaps I have to restart the query tab I'm going to try it after this. What I find problematic with this is it's literally changing my settings, the configurations of my entire system. It's not just changing the configuration of this specific project. It's also changing my NPM versions. I need to install this. I need to install that. That can be problematic for other projects that I'm working with. Did we finally get it? We finally got it. Let's pop this out. No, let's cancel this. It's all good now. Now I would like to refresh this to see what will happen. Because I'm still running my Shopify like, Okay, there you go. We have additional page and products here. So let's click that. And there you go. We have our products page. We have a menu in the sidebar. And we have a title products. And it's using the Polaris table with the list of products. And its status is set to active. I didn't tell him to do that, but okay. Inventory, the price is there, and we have Bernard's the most handsome shop if I call it. I like that, I like that. But I would like to double check because I am not sure I have these products here. Let's open this. I have it. I have it. It's active. Okay, good. Let's go back to the app. Where is it now? Okay. Now I would like to generate a product. There we go. We have a new product. Let's just go back to the products page. And we have a new product here. That is pretty interesting. Now, personally speaking, I think quote unquote vibe coding is good. It'll save you a lot of time, but I don't think this is for someone who does not know how to code or how to, you know, work with web apps or softwares or programs. So with all that being said, what are the pros and cons of Vibe coding? Let's start with pros. Like I said earlier, it'll save you a ton of time writing thousands of codes. I'll get back to that later. And next one, this is great for studying programming or software engineering. Like you can use it as a teacher to explain everything you don't know. And this is what I appreciate from this experience because when I was working with it, it told me which file it changed, why give you an explanation etc and next one cursor ai or vibe coding is a must have for introverted people or developers why because we don't want to talk to real people on a serious note though i think vibe coding or vibe coders are going to be the next developers or programmers especially for startups because as you all know, startups most of the time want to save money as much as possible and the vibe coding is for now is cheap for now. And besides, they don't really care about the code or how it's written, how bad it is, which programming language it used. It doesn't really matter as long as the app makes money or it works, that's what matters. And once they start making money, that's the time they will hire someone to refactor or debug the codes or the apps. Which brings me to the next point. 
what are the cons of vibe coding? Vibe coding is going to be difficult to debug, especially if it already wrote thousands of files or codes. That's going to be one hell of a job. <laughs> now imagine you get hired as a developer to fix those Cursor AI codes, and then you start using Cursor AI as well, and you ask it, what did you do in here? <laughs> what happened? Now in conclusion, is vibe coding the next thing? Is it the future? Maybe. Is it going to replace programmers, software engineers, Shopify developers? No, definitely not. Should you try it? Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, let me know by liking this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And by the way, speaking of next video, in the next video, we're going to try Cursor AI or Vibe Coding for Shopify theme development. I think that's going to be pretty interesting. Once again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.